Mr. Ossoff, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to our witnesses for your service. Mr. Rascott, I'd like to raise with you a matter that is of particular significance to my constituents in Georgia, given that we host the Port of Savannah, the fourth largest deep water port in the country, uh, a vital logistics hub mm -hmm. for the Southeast United States uh, and a, a host of major shipping terminals. A 2022 GAO report found significant issues and delays with the deployment of new radiation monitors that Customs and Border Protection operates at ports like Savannah. What impact might these delays and issues have on port operations? How can operators of ports like the Port of Savannah be confident that CWMD will take into account their specific needs and provide them with the tools needed to ensure cargo is scanned for radiological and other threats at the Port of Savannah? Thank you for the question, uh, Senator, and we, and we certainly appreciate GAO's uh, looking at the RPM program, uh, and we are taking all of their recommendations to heart, and actually I'm, I'm raising the level of uh, how we address those issues. Uh, I think we were sort of maybe stuck in a little bit of middle management on that, but I met, met, with, met with the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Customs, and we continue to meet to make sure we're aligned on our expectations. As you know, we provide those systems for uh, CBP, um, and they work in the port. I, you know, we're in the middle of a, of a sort of a modernization, a recapitalization of the uh, radiation portal monitors. Um, we're providing 200 of the new ones uh, to high volume ports um, and to try and reduce the nuisance alarms, which is what slows down the flow through the ports. Um, Savannah is on that list to get those. I believe that they're waiting until the, the ocean terminals finish before they actually do the deployment. And what we work closely with CBP on that. And we're very willing to uh, facilitate uh, any conversation between ourselves, CBP, and your port uh, officials. Um, I, I can get you a name and we'll, 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 get, it, we'll, we'll get it going. Um, the other piece is, even though we aren't deploying the new units to Savannah, we have been working um, through our transformational R&D programs on some machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's a program called Ernie, I don't name them. But um, it's a way to reduce the nuisance alarms and we are, that technology is going forward in Savannah. So I, I, I'd be happy to either sit with your staff and give a full brief on that or uh, really just meet with the port partners and make sure they're up to speed with what's going on. Well, I appreciate that was going to be my next question uh, for your commitment to communicate directly with port leadership and other relevant parties at the port to ensure that those lines of communication Absolutely, are open. Senator, we're, we're very willing to do that. And, and will you commit to working with my office to expedite as possible and practical the deployment of those technologies, whether it's the software platforms yes. or the new hardware as possible yeah, to ensure the Port of Savannah is secure, the people of Georgia are safe, and national security is protected. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that commitment. I'd like to ask you as well about DHS collaboration with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention based in Atlanta. CDC has worked closely with your office in the past, including to test air in public spaces for dangerous pathogens, and CDC is part of the BioWatch program analyzing air filters for biological threats. How can you deepen your partnerships with the CDC and what role does the CDC currently play in your ongoing programs and activities? Um, actually, sir, the, through the COVID pandemic, I would say that we have become closer to CB, a CDC than we have ever been before. We have worked hand in glove with them uh, and, and many of the travel and transportation um, issues that we have, be it airport screening and other things. Uh, I talk nearly daily to the leadership of CDC. I've worked with them on for the airline issues, for the cruise ship issues. We also worked them on biodetection issues, and they are, I, I spoke about earlier, we're taking a new strategic direction in biosurveillance. They're a big partner with that, as long as with the, uh, along with the HHS and ASPR. Um, the other piece of that is, is we do biosurveillance with our National Biosurveillance Integration Center. It's a, your staff get these reports. We put out reports on all that's going on in the world in the, in the bio threat arena. CDC is creating a similar but, not, uh, but complementary capability under the CARES Act. We have got people down there on the ground floor helping them with the lesson. What we don't need is two, we call it NBIC. We don't need two NBICs. We need another uh, entity that does what NBIC doesn't do. So we're working hand in glove with them to make sure that we get the, mo the government gets the most out of these two surveillance centers. So I, I don't think our relationship with CDC can be stronger. We just signed an, uh, a letter of agreement with them that will ease our support of their operations 
um, be it at the airports or at other ports of entry, um, based on the lessons learned uh, through COVID. So, um, and as I said, sir, I talk to their leadership nearly daily. Thank you, Mr. Rascott. And final question uh, for you, Mr. Rascott, and also for you, Dr. Sherman, please. Um, o over the long run, what are the potential privacy or Fourth Amendment or health privacy implications of the deployment of these sensors at scale, perhaps in some future scenarios beyond just at ports of entry? Have you given any thought to that, to the privacy implications of the proliferation of biosensors across our economy? We can start with you, Dr. Sherman. Yes, thank you. That, um, uh, the issue of privacy with respect to the biosensors is it's not uh, something that we looked closely at as part of our review in April. So if um, you'd be willing, I'd like to take that question back and uh, provide a, a response to your office. Certainly. And Mr. Rascott, thank you, Dr. Sherman. And Mr. Rascott, just based upon your experience and expertise, uh, I'd invite you, even if it's not something that you've recently committed deep thought to, to uh, give the committee a sense of how you approach that issue and how you consider it. Yeah, the, the department at large, and you've heard Secretary Mayorka say uh, how, how important pri privacy is to all of us. And um, so, no, that, it's one of our primary concerns whenever we put out any sort of surveillance piece. And we, we consult regularly with our chief privacy officer uh, on any of these type of issues, sir. So it's in, it, 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 I want to, it's in the foreground of all these discussions. And, and the Secretary is clear on how that works. Well, these technologies are obviously vital to national security and public health, but as with any system of sensors, as they become more advanced and more prevalent, we do need to consider the potential long-term implications for, for privacy and civil liberties. So, Dr. Sherman, let's uh, have my office and yours have a conversation about that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.